this special uh, production, uh, this, this uh, uh, flux of uh, um, programming is uh, quite good because you can test everything uh, using the, the offline. This is the syntax of uh, uh, the decoupler robot. And we can see here uh, what are the lines, what kind of language are we talking about. But the student, they can pick the robot, okay? They can pick this code, the KPR, UCA. And they can say what kind of tool. They, there's a, a, also a, a toolbox with a different uh, um, grippers or tools. We can also draw one and say, okay, I want to put a new tool. I, will, I want to create this tool. And then, for in this case, this is a canoe, a Canadian canoe. Uh, this is the path for the Polish. And this is the, the second settings for the path. And we can create this kind of uh, movements. For instance, with the cobots, we define with the hands the pos different yeah. position. And then we do the trajectory. We did this industrial, also we can define some positions, and then we can define what kind of trajectory we, we want to do. And we can do this using the mouse, using uh, the, robot, the, the, the computer, all the facilities, uh, moving from one point to another in the joint or in the space, and forget this code. And in the end, he generates the code for us, OK? Uh, when we, ah, we can do it online or offline, OK? We can, we can do without the, comp the robot is uh, connected to our system. OK, if we look at the robot, this is the industrial robot, KUKA. We have the, this is, is, in, is in the terminal of the robot. We can see what is the, the name of the robot, because we can have more than one robot connected in, the, in our workspace. We can define what is the program here. And then we're going to create uh, the, the code, SRC code, and all the data. Okay. To do that, the new new object select or duplicate. This is uh, in, very intuitive to to uh, manipulate the robot. If we want to change the 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 joints, this is in the joints. But if we click here, we are going to change the for the workspace, for the end effector, for the object that we are move here. We can do the change of the velocity. We can say uh, also a lot of things. Um, here we can move each angle. Okay, We can change the angle of the robot. Uh, also, if we look at the robot, we can uh, change the, the velocity for, for the different percentage of the velocity. Also, the mode of program. This is go is go to all the program. This is each each uh, motion. You're going to repeat. You, uh, you do one motion, then stop, and you do the second motion if you allow. And this is single step. Each step you're going to check if it is all right. Okay. We can activate the mouse. We can change the mouse orientation, okay? Uh, this is different angles. Also, this is the synchroni uh, synchronization between the base, the tool, the axis of the robots, everything you, we can change. Also, also, we can put, we are here, but we can put, we are in the left side or in the right side of the robot, and when we put this, he knows, and then we say, go in front, it's different if we are in front of the robot because we change the base of the, uh, the, the position of the, our robot. Okay? We can define different workspace. We can uh, easily uh, also uh, find a, and uh, create a loop. Um, we can define different programs and send 
for this is KPRL program for, for the cooker. We can uh, dif uh, define different uh, um, structures for, for uh, determine movements. For instance, this is a point to point for position one with some velocity. And if we have a tool, what kind of tool, uh, if we change the base of the system or not. Um, this is a linear linear movement. This, this is a movement in the in the in the inverse kinematic, and the point to point is a movement in the joint space. And it's quite easy for the students to to do this kind of test. This is a linear uh, point to point movement. I I start in P1 and go to P2, and we do this kind of moon, movement. But if we want to do a linear movement, you're going to P1 to P2 as a linear mo movement. And for instance, if we create these two positions and we give some position between, and we say, okay, we want a movement between this position and this one, and this is the, where will the robot is going to pass. And you're going to do this kind of movement. This is also nice because we can create this intermediary position and it can move between from one position to another, but it, it never reached this position. Okay. It, it will something like this. This is nice because we can make move, so soft movements. Yeah. So soft is it's, 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 it's nice. And it's like a spline, a spline. This is a spline spine movement between the different points. We can give these points and we uh, is smooth, smooth movement is yeah. the, the right name. Um, also we can generate positions uh, delta x, delta y and we can change these uh, mm -hmm. angles, this uh, displacement this, this this for uh, do some mathematical movements. I want to go to this position, then after the second time I will go into this position and some delta yeah. in, in some uh, uh, orientation. And we can easily uh, develop this kind of program. Um, this, there are some, some examples of uh, uh, some position. I want to go to uh, position 4, starting in position 1, and I can change some uh, uh, points in this trajectory with, uh, with uh, uh, different velocities. We, we can change almost everything at, at the same time. Uh, uh, the idea is to develop a program to come, go to from position A to position B, or position B to position A. And you can see that we can uh, create some examples and uh, run these examples and change different positions. If we look at the, the, the robot, uh, also we can see what are the outputs, what are the inputs activated, and then we can also create some um, functions. If the input one and input two is activated, we do this. And if we, well, uh, the idea is to, to show to the students they can they can wait for uh, uh, some events. If yeah. the sensor one and sensor two is activated, we do the example one. If well, they can do this to 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 check also uh, the facilities of the software to impl implement something in the in the in the company. Uh, this is the, the the configuration of the simulator of Kuka. Now is much better. Um, and this is uh, also some examples, not good for the, the food uh, engineering, but, but we can see uh, even uh, for a welding machine, uh, now the, the, the worker can easily change the position and correct something using the touch pattern, and the robot is doing the, the task. A few years ago, it was the human doing the task and making the correction at the same time. Uh, this is a machine loading for pick and place using the, the, 
delta robots, the parallel robots, uh, and uh, they, they, I have some also some movies. Uh, now the, uh, we have uh, uh, no, not only the cobots but also some industrial robots for new applications uh, with the uh, with the vision system, with the uh, deep learning. We can easily increase the applications uh, for for using the, the the industrial robots. As we can see, vision system or X-rays, ultrasonics, they are integrated in some systems to to do uh, some different applications. Even in, in health, for operating, uh, the robots can do uh, a lot of things. Uh, and there are some uh, uh, robots already in the in the health uh, companies uh, for operating uh, patients. Okay. Uh, also, there are different robots for different applications, in, in, uh, like a dog uh, with an industrial robot uh, or a mobile robot with an industrial robot in the top. Also, uh, some cooker, a uh, robot doing the, 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 the food. Uh, also, collaborative robots is a, a new kind of uh, automatic handling system. Uh, and the, the human also can uh, teach the robot to do some task. And uh, we can teach the robot to do different tasks and it can work in collaboration with the human at the same time. Yeah. Okay? This is also a new market for the roads. There are some examples, uh, some different roads. In this case, this is a KUKA. But if we look at the, this uh, configuration, here we can see the reach of each robot and also the payload. We can see the limitation. We only have the maximum 25 kilos yeah. for a cobalt. And the maximum is, is uh, 1 meter and 70 something. And this is the, some, some limitation, okay? And if we look at the, the way of doing the software, it's, it's quite nice because even for UR, uh, UR uh, robots, the software is available, you can download, you can uh, test the software in less than two hours, you can do everything. You can use a robot up in 10 minutes, you can program the robot, it's amazing. 10 minutes, nothing. And we can define some trajectories, we can define uh, four or five examples of the tasks that we want to do, and we can say, okay, this is the, if, if this sensor is activated, we can do this. And uh, then we combine different tasks and uh, we, can, we can see this kind of work uh, uh, doing the, this, these tasks. This also was one of the first uh, um, collaborative robots, the, the Sawyer. It's quite nice because it's, he has the, the camera integrated the software is, uh, is, also, is, is also easy because it's like uh, uh, with, with, uh, with links, it's, it's like drawing. Yeah. It's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not the same program, uh, it's not like you are or a uh, uh, dozen robots. Um, anyway, it's quite easy to, to use this kind of system. He already has some sensors integrated, but they they stop uh, fabricate this robot. Uh, it's, it's obsolete. It's no. new, but it's not obsolete. They they are uh, other robots that uh, uh, also they we can use ROS uh, and we can uh, they program this kind of uh, system. They they. These kind of robots, they have new interface, um, but you can see here, for instance, this is the UR. We have payloads for seven kilos, ma maximum speed is one meter per second, uh, but this, the repeatability is, 
is 100 uh, micro is 0 0.01. Yeah, is uh, is 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 amazing. Um, and if we compare industrial robots with the uh, with the new cobots, we don't need this kind of uh, gauge for the cobot. Also, it's a great advantage because the robot is safe. Okay depending on the, the tool that you want to put in the robot, we, we can increase or uh, decrease the, the collaborative operation. If we put a knife in the robot to cut the meat, yeah. it's not a collaborative robot because we're going to have a collaborative robot with a knife in the, in the, in the yeah. tool. Yeah, it's not funny to, to work with him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's more safe than the industrial robots. As we can see, some person do some work, some task in, 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 with collaboration with, uh, with, uh, with the robot. There are uh, new uh, uh, laws that um, requires this device for uh, safety uh, issues. And also we can see what is the collaborative operation versus collaborative work. Okay, this, they are two different concepts. First of all, we have collaborative operation when we are interacting with people, robots is interacting. But uh, collaborative work space, okay. The robot pick and place something here and give to the human or the human put something over there and the robot use the cooperative workspace to go there and help the human, but it's not collaborative uh, operation with human. Okay, he can uh, uh, cooperate uh, with human using this kind of. Uh. Also, um, this is some rules that you can see in the ISO. Um, some of them are uh, explaining how can we use robots for uh, working with person. For instance, if we are near the robot, the velocity is, must be equal to zero. And there are some uh, uh, um, law uh, information that can help us to provide this kind of uh, um, facilities to put robots working with, uh, with, uh, with humans, okay? Um, also, we can integrate uh, sensors for sensors and we can, we can, we can do uh, also the control of the force. This is some new applications that are using for uh, cobots and how can we do the, uh, the do the, the software the typical even if we go to online we can use the read uh, through the program and they could be active or passive with or without the sensors we can we can provide information for the, for the software to develop something and with the speed and uh, separation motion, we can see this is an industrial robot, yeah. okay? And we can have a sensor here, and if we are in this specific part, we reduce the velocity. If we are here, we stop the robot, and we have the same activity as the the uh, cobot, okay? We can use depending on the the, the uh, application, we can use even the industrial robots uh, with the same um, uh, laws mm. uh, for doing cobot because sometimes we have the cobot but when we change the, the tool of the cobot we have the, the same situation well they, they, they this is only the, the the way to calculate the the velocity of the robot and this is to finish because we don't have a lot of time uh, there are a lot of tasks, for instance, do some, some pizza with the students and they can develop something using this kind of technology. Okay, for me, I don't know if you have 
some questions you are from IT. Um, you should not just be for multiple robots with different load. Um, those uh, maximum load length with uh, its precision or but multiple robots for doing what? Um, yeah, mm, just that uh, you should us different robots with maximum loads. Yeah. And I just wanted to know if uh, the maximum load have a link with uh, the precision of uh, the robot. Yeah, of uh, each each robot, for instance, if you want a robot with uh, one thousand kilos, you need a motor to. To 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 have the 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 force to move this this uh, load, okay. Of course, the precision the precision we're going to to be the precision that the, the fabricates gives for each model, okay. Of course, if we are talking about one company, they use the same motors with different uh, payloads, but the precisions are the same. Uh, I don't know, if you want to increase, for instance, the precision, we must change the sensors or the actuators of the robot. But I think all of these systems have good precision. Okay? Uh, the, the big issue, for instance, if we look at the mobile robots, if we give some coordinate from one position, and I want to go to another position, and the robot is trying to move. And all the wheels, it's like the industrial robots, they are moving and we are getting the information. At the same time, we, we need to know where is the environment. We need some external sensors. We have the internal sensors to give the information of the wheels. But we need also information for the external uh, system because we need to know uh, if I can move, do this movement or if there is some constraint over there. Uh, when we have the industrial robots, we have the same. Also, we have the sensors inside of the robot to, to give to, to obtain the internal uh, activity of the robot. To, and then also we need some external sensors to to see what is the environment. Okay. If, you, if we want to increase the precision of our system, uh, of course, it will be depending on the robot, but they want to be competitive. They cannot put the best motor yeah. with the price of the worst motor. Yeah. Uh, depending. If, you, if we want a better robot or something with a uh, they, they have different prices. I don't know if I, I tried to explain that, but uh, the quality of the roads, I think they are, all of them, they are quite good because the, the yeah. precision is 0 0.1. And I, I think it's, uh, it, it's a bit similar as for, for computers. Earlier, for, for way back when, you actually had differences in computers. Yeah, but, but nowadays, it's almost the same. Yeah, you just specify how much you need power, and yeah. then you get it. And it's not, yeah. it's not that significant if it's a, if it's a Lenovo or a Fujitsu. If it has the same gear inside, then it does the same. Well, almost the same <laughs> things. Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's like it's like the technology when we reach the mobile phones without. Uh, yeah. <laughs> new mobile phones don't have the, the keyboard. Yeah. keyboard. And it was someone that, okay, without keyboard and with keyboard. And everybody preferred without. And all, now all the devices don't have keyboards. Yeah. It's the same. Uh, of course, the, the, the problem, the problem of this kind of industry of robots is they change the robots five in five years. Mm. The problems of spares, the problems of software, because the software of the robot is different from the software of five years ago yeah. or ten years ago, and it's, it's complicated. Or if you want to change something, uh, some sensors, 
but with ROS now, also everything is integrated. Yeah. It's open sources. And it's quite easy to put a new robot with the sensors and uh, integrate everything. A few years ago it was uh, quite difficult. Yeah. Now it's more easy. Marcus, any question? Uh, can I ask you know, about this kind of uh, robots which has, as example, about uh, 13 or 14 axes? Are they, what is your opinion or image with that, that kind well, of robots? I Are they uh, some kind of uh, useful or not? In future, because well, I, I already worked with now the uh, uh, is a humanoid robot. Yes, it's quite nice because he has 25 degrees of freedom. Uh, we can walk, we can uh, do a lot of things. We can dance with the robot. We can jump almost. Uh, we can run, or we can increase the velocity of the robot because it's, he, he doesn't run. <laughs> anyway, the Having this kind of robots, with the, we can use two robots instead of one, but then we need to synchronize all the movements. Don't forget that. That's the great advantage. Of course, if we have always the same uh, type of robot, I think also it could be easy. But if we have different robots, yeah. from Kawasaki, with a, yeah. uh, then they should communicate. It's more difficult. Uh, but this, everything is all already integrated. This kind of robot is uh, they, they have a controller that makes the synchronization of every motor. Uh, yeah. And it's more easy. It is more easy because if you say, okay, let's do some movement first, I'm going to do this, then with the other motor, I'm, with the other arm, I'm going to do another task. Mm -hmm. And they are synchronized. But if they are independent, they could be doing the same thing at the same time yeah. if they don't have sensor or, or if they have some problem. Yeah. Of I course. Know. Yeah, if, if they are networked, then it it's more easy. Yeah, it, yeah. But even if they are networked, then the, depending on the task, even the, the latency between yeah, the that, that might be a problem. Could be a problem, but that, the reason that we can do some software, okay, instead of doing this movement, I must receive the information from the other. Yeah, too. And then we do the synchronization. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, if we have already uh, everything integrated, then maybe the function is already synchronized. Yes, but uh, I'm thinking about that. Are those uh, too expensive for, uh, as example, uh, of course, in worker sector, as example, there is uh, maybe lack of employees in the future. Yeah, it's a uh, huge, huge lack. And, uh, I think are those too expensive? Yeah, but when we look at this image, what we are doing is okay, trying to show that in the future we're going to have a robot similar to human. But it's not need. We can have uh, two arms, two mm -hmm. robots, and different, uh, and do the same thing. Okay, this is. We have a mobile robot and we have uh, some aspect similar to human with two arms. But we can have two different industrial robots with different configuration and they can interact and do the same. Okay? But of course, they sell. <laughs> they sell the idea of having something similar to the human. And yeah. Yeah, I think that's the, the idea of in this case, Motomen is Yashkawa, uh, uh, Japanese. But, but if we look at this, the, this kind of robots, uh, the University of, of Coimbra, they have one uh, ABD, yes, the Yashki, uh, the robot with two arms. Yes. They have I, I think we have a Yumi. Yumi, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's that one. That's, that's, uh, it's, it's nice. Also, you can use ROS to control. But uh, the teach parent or the simulator can also uh, is, is, is useful 
for do some some tasks. But I think even for the students, if it is a, a repetitive task, they can easily uh, do this. If it is something uh, with the information of the sensors, uh, for instance, the vision or something like that, I think it's more easy for the electrical students. From, I don't know. I don't know if the students for uh, uh, food engineering they could be able to uh, develop something in IT with deep learning or something. I don't know. But if we integrate students from IT, from uh, electrical, and from food engineering, maybe they don't care about this part. Okay, yeah, I want to repeat this task. Mm -hmm. and they are different. The, and the robot for them is only the device that will want to do the movement. Well, okay, as an example, it would be nice to know what kind, what could be a customer experience. As an example, if you are this kind of uh, robot is serving, as example, in restaurant. I don't know, but uh, we we can put a robot. You have a robot over there, yeah. a mobile robot to do something. Yeah. For instance, in the, in the canteen of the yeah. students, you can uh, give the food, and then when they when the robot reach from, because we can also test this easily. We we know the map of the of the canteen. Okay. Uh, Mar uh, we have to uh, visit on the other side of the river. There is yeah. also a robot. I didn't remember yesterday. Yeah, yeah. The, that yes. must be also interesting because the, the School of Health and Nursing, they also have um, yeah, COVID for this. Uh, well. there, there is Ala, Alisa. Alisa, yeah. She, or the Johnny, they have any questions? They, do. they don't have any questions, uh, no. at least I haven't heard any. But, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I think they might have already escaped to lunch. Okay, we will go to do the same. <laughs> yes, I think people, uh, they are eating quite early at lunch. Yeah. Lunch because all of our people, uh, uh, my colleagues, uh, they are eating 11 o'clock. Okay. I'm not hungry, ready? not yet at that time. And I, I'm wondering why they are so busy with that. Yeah. Like Marcus. You are. I, I can leave any day, at any time. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, one, um, I did have one, one question. So, uh, the, so the degrees of freedom, it's, um, if, if, if it's more than six, then it's just too computationally intensive to find out the singularity. It's, it's just. That's the reason why there's not like seven degrees of freedom. Is it, is it that like a... No, uh, it, it we use a, six because we need to put the robot in specific orientation. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, if it is only to put the robot in that position, we need only three. Yeah. Then we need more three yeah. to change the orientation. Yeah. Okay. Of course, we can put more uh, degrees of freedom, but mm -hmm. of course, uh, but the the sing the no, no, we don't, we don't need that. We, we need, typically we need the seven link yeah. to move the robot from one point yeah. to another. Of course, we can move for, from different points. Um, and also synchronize with other links to, to yeah. repeat some movement for a welding, for, for yeah. instance. Um, but for industrial case, I think this is more than enough. 